one of the things you keep on reading and seeing on Twitter, social media, public discussions about the XRP ledger is how it doesn't have smart contracts. And I would say for most use cases, it's actually a good thing that the XRPL doesn't have smart contracts because features are implemented natively, which means they are fast, they're efficient, they're well documented. Uh, uh, and getting the features onto the ledger in, 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 a, in a good way has to go through consensus. Uh, people have to vote on it uh, and you cannot just create anything and, and, and put bloat on the, on the ledger. And also, the ledger is known for being very efficient when it comes to uh, a, a transaction finality under four seconds, when it comes to fees, fraction, fraction of a penny, when it comes to uh, transaction throughput. And you want to keep it that way and you don't want to compromise that. So um, originally I felt that not having smart contracts was actually the best thing. And then at some point I realized a couple of things when it comes to smart contracts. One, innovation happens where people don't have limitations. So innovation happens on networks with, for example, EVM. Because whatever isn't there, whatever isn't on the chain, if they can think of it, again, they can build it. You get this big box of Legos and you start to build whatever you like. Um, which is amazing and a lot of good things came from that, right? A lot of the blockchain innovation today happened because people started building random stuff as smart contracts. Um, and it takes time for an idea like that to reproduce it in native code and implement that as an amendment and allow people to vote on it and, and get it live on the XRPL, which means the XRPL is always playing catch up when it comes to new features. Um, which is again partially good and partially a shame because you don't get the innovation. A, a bigger problem is that if you look at blockchain today, we are going to need a lot of features uh, that are going to take a long time to implement natively and they wouldn't be as flexible as you want them to be if you implement them natively. Because if you want to make any change, you have to code it, you have to thoroughly test it, turn it into amendment, get it through consensus, vote on it. And as they should, network participants are very careful when it comes to voting in new features. So if you look at blockchain today, still an island, uh, and, and the real world, the global uh, world of, of finance and uh, 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 fund management and everything, there needs to be interaction between those two worlds. A very good example is uh, today's problem with key management. If you lose your private key, your funds are gone. If, if you lose your private key uh, uh, to someone else, they can steal all your funds and nothing can stop it and nothing can revert it, which is amazing, which is how you want it to be because your funds are really yours, but at the same time, it doesn't work. If we want retail adoption, if we want everybody, if we want my grandmother and mother and nephew, if we want everybody to use the XRP ledger or any blockchain technology for their everyday uh, commerce, for their loyalty points, for their collectibles, for their access to a concert, for anything, we cannot tell them that they no longer get into the concert because they don't have their private key anymore. We cannot tell them that they lose their pension because they forgot to set up multi-signing, backup keys, and they lost their private key because their house burned down and with that their entire pension. It just doesn't work. So what we have built today to take that to the next level, to implement this technolo technology in real life, we need features that are not going to be natively available for quite some time when it comes to uh, uh, pr uh, programmed, programmatically uh, allowing for key recovery for example. Uh, so I realized that we do need some programmability on the XRP ledger. And I, you could say that that's smart contracts, programmability on ledger, a layer one solution. Uh, but I do think that we can do a lot of things more efficiently and keep it more compact uh, uh, than today's smart contract solutions, which is why we started to work on hooks. And Richard, one of the brilliant people at XRPL Labs, I mean, I, I don't understand the things he shares with me. So he's, he's another level. He's on another level. And he, uh, he had some thoughts about how smart contracts on the XRPL 
could work. I had some thoughts as well. We started to discuss those because he was part of the XRPL community. Well, he's the original developer of Toast Wallet. A lot of people used it back in the days. And we discussed this, had a lot of uh, uh, chats about this, and we realized that we wanted to work on this together, which is actually when he uh, moved from New Zealand to the Netherlands and now lives here in Amersfoort and works with us here in this office. And he built 99.9% uh, .9 of uh, hooks and hooks, the smart contract solution for the XRPL, keeping the XRPL as fast, as cheap as it always has been, uh, but allowing for your own custom logic on Ledger, exists today. There is a public testnet and developers are actively working with it. So this is not uh, some vision that we might or may not realize. It, it exists today and we still have a lot to do, but it is coming. Thank <laughs> you.